this video is to show how I set up the ICOM IC7700 um, for use with WSJTX. Um, primarily interested in FT8 and FT4. A um, few things I had to do. Um, now I've already got uh, the RSBA1 ICOM software installed on this laptop. Um, which to be honest if I hadn't got on there I would have had a bit of issues doing this um, because it installs a virtual codec for the microphone and the loudspeaker um, which obviously the IC7700 hasn't got an internal sound card um, so you need to talk to it some way um, to get the data from the PC into the radio now the other thing you're going to need is either an RS232 lead uh, but I opted for um, the CIV cable um, which is for the ICOM radios um, basically you've got a US port, B port on one end and a 3.5 mono um, audio plug on the other end um, I bought it on Amazon, uh, we'll put a link to that um, it's quite simple, I mean it, uh, obviously this end plugs into your PC and the other end, uh, there's the remote socket there, it just plugs into there and that's it. Um, keeps it nice and tidy, uh, it's only a short lead. I will actually be doing another video uh, using this, um, the optical in and out, um, so I can hopefully avoid having to use the RSBI1 software. Um, so, but I'll put that in another video. Um, I've ordered the bits, hopefully they should come in the next day and we'll have a go with that. Uh, but this video is primarily using the, um, the CIV cable um, and a LAN connection um, from the PC into the radio via my router, hub, whatever you want to call it, um, for the sound, because the CI the cable only passes data uh, such as what the radio is doing what the settings are um, it cannot pass audio um, so you need another way of getting the audio from the pc into the radio um, and this option uses the lan connection to do it and what we need to do is plug him in to our usb port uh, try and stick with the same usb port once you've set all this up because otherwise you have to keep changing stuff plug him in, let's bring up device manager and there it is there, it's come up as that one there prolific USB to serial COM port COM7 okay so we know that's installed and working right let's minimize that uh, right first thing to do is run your ICOM remote utility um, and make sure you're connected which we are um, now it's quite important with this um, on this setup that you need to click on there click on the mod button and change from mic to V audio if you don't do that it ain't gonna work uh, because that's utilizing the ICOM uh, virtual audio driver so let's close that and I can show you that um, down here, if we click on the speaker icon, we've got a choice of speakers, communications headphones, or the icon virtual audio driver. Select that as your primary, um, and we're all good to go then, because um, that will be your default. The rest of the program should notice that. Um, other settings I've got set in there, which really affect nothing. I've had to set a virtual com portal but this software does that anyway basically re re requests that you do one um, so I've done that I've just set one to com10 so and that will travel through in the rest of the program as well um, what I'll do is I'll run the ICOM utilities just so you can see that working I'm oh, sorry wrong one again but yeah yes I'll just put that on there while it loads up and I can hide all my so okay so we're set up on there so that's working so if i spin the dial on the radio it's going with it so no problem at all so we know that works um my settings on this are set uh model is the icom 7700 version 2.10 software connection type's got to be lan 
um, remote utility uh, it's just what I called it basically the com port there the virtual one is 10 uh, the CIV address is important it's got to be set to, uh, the radio's default mine 74 so I've left down that and I did set the board rate I didn't just leave it at auto I've turned off the bottom um, option for um, turning the radio off when you close this program because it was annoying me um, but that that's my basic settings for that anyway um, if you've got this software you 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 should know these settings anyway it's probably typical of what you've already got set up so we'll close that because we don't need that right we've done that so we've we've in, we've uh, set the v audio in there next thing to do is really set up some settings now in the in the actual radio um so let's do that we'll minimize that and if we jump to the radio right if we go into the set menu and we need um, set and we need to go to ACC and what we need to do is on the data modes I'm going to use data mode 1 I've set it to LAN if you don't do that it won't work um, if you leave it set on mic ACC whatever it won't work so I've set it to LAN um, I believe that's the only setting I need to do in there uh, let me just quickly check so you can see what other settings I've got. No, there's nothing else in there at all. Okay, so we'll come back out of that. Now if we go into others, um, this is at the very bottom of the page. Um, I did play with the uh, the uh, sample rates. I just set them all on. <laughs> Whether it works or not, I don't know. There's the, the radio name. Um, I've set up a password. I'm working my way up the list here. So um, you do need a you do need this for um, the RSBA1 software if you want to um, connect to it remotely. Um, uh, the internet line offset to FT, F double T H, um, and all everything else is defaulted. Obviously, turn network control on, um, or well, then go and work. Um, then you've got your default IP addresses. Um, what else did we set? Uh, obviously the RST function is CIV uh, don't need that Trans there's the address for the CIV address that's where I set the board rate and I set it to shut down um, function where it shut down standby so when I press the power button on the radio uh, it, gives, it asks me do I want to turn it off or do I want to put it in a standby mode so if I want to remotely access it I can um, I don't think there's any other settings that we set in here. I think that's it really. I don't remember setting anything else at all to be honest. So, so that's done. So let's exit that, exit that. Um, put the meters back on. Um, what we'll do now, we'll load uh, WSJTX um, and I'll show you the settings for that. Let's set it. The radio is currently not set correctly, so let's set that for uh, 20 meters. And there you go. Now, this has actually defaulted to the data mode one, but um, normally it'd just be set to USB. Um, and that's where I then selected the LAN connection for the data mode. Um, and we're already picking up stuff up on here now, so but I'll show you the. Um, the configuration that I've got set up so in my settings um, the usual for the first page um, call sign location uh, these boxes are obviously you can select what you want to tick on these this is the default I've used the radio settings this is the important one um, now the cat control is from comp 7 um, which I showed you when we uh, we plugged in the um, the CIV cable uh, set the board rate to that Bit, data bits I've set as default, stop bits default, handshaking default, uh, PTT method has got to be cat, um, and then make sure your mode is set to data packet, and split operation put fake it. Um, you can then click on the button, do a quick test, if it goes green, it's all working. 
do a quick PT if you want that's working fine so no problem at all with that um, audio if you remember from down here I said the default as the icon virtual audio driver so that's what it's seen as if you haven't done that you'll, you'll find it in the pull down list and you can select it from there um, TX macro is not important reporting that's my settings for that uh, frequency is not important I haven't changed anything it's advanced I don't believe I changed anything in that either um, so let's close that down we'll have a good now I'm, I do not profess to know how to use this program at all really um, basically what I do is I normally set it CQ only so I just see the, who's, call, who's calling um, and then when I see one I'll give it a double click um, let's see what comes up uh, see if we can get a contact now it's important that you also synchronize your PC um, with some kind of external um, atomic clock source you know that's so everybody's on the same power basically um, otherwise you'll, you'll probably find that you'll be able to receive okay but you just might not be able to send at the right time um, we'll try that one there so double click that radio has gone in to transmit um, and now we're sending out a little packet um, hopefully they'll respond back to it we'll see in a minute um, it's not always the most successful thing this but um, we'll try we've got to wait for 15 seconds in between oh yeah we've got a contact there no problem at all with that so if you look over here it's gone pink so now we're just dropping down this list of the uh, generated standard messages that we're sending back so it's currently transmitting still um, and hopefully we'll get something back in a minute um, and I'll then finish off by sending a 73 probably there we go there's my final message and there's the log for it so um, say OK to that and stick that one in the log. And that was an OH3BY. Well, I hope this is this sort of helps. Um, I, I can't really say, I, I don't really want to talk too much about the program because I don't know how to use it about that much, work, to be honest. Basically, I just uh, I don't generally call CQ, I just basically click on somebody and get a contact. Um, but I hope that helps.